as we're into <laughs> our starting lineups as we take a look at the starting team for Inter Miami. Joseph Martinez, as I mentioned, is leading the line. Yeah, we're James Pantamis is challenging Jonathan Sirwa in goal. They traded blows last year for the shirt. They're looking to cement that number one spot. Season tie. Chris Whittingham, Devin Kerr with you here in the Audi Halftime Reporters. We can now get you your halftime highlights and the chances got started within the opening 30 seconds. Montreal quickly up the pitch and forcing Nick Marsman into a save. Intensity was never going to be a question when coming in for the new manager, Hernan Lasada. The question was going to be is how efficient could they be on the ball when they started to transition? It doesn't matter how much you have the ball. It's what would you do with it here. So you're going to see four separate players, three different ball passers coming across and six touches. The long ball up over the top, that gives you the ability to break down the entire unit itself. But then from there, you've still got another 60 yards to go. And how quickly can you do it? Smart run here by Kyoto. Many a number nine are going to track the ball, try and come back to the center location. Instead, you drift off on the back corner. Great vision here by Sunusi Ibrahim to catch the runner on the back post. They go up one to nil. Excellent response here from Inter Miami. You started to come back the other direction. These cute little diagonals coming back through. Joseph Martinez a couple of times. This one is for Ariel Lassiter, but excellent defending by Aaron Herrera to push it away. Harvey Neville with a nice ball as well to find Joseph Martinez, both he and Lasseter trying to find the spaces, particularly in between the center backs. I would say it's it's not just the space, Chris. It's also the ability to have the support within that space. A lot of those runs that we've seen so far have pushed them away from the attack. And that's exactly what went on here. As soon as the ball's given up, it works in the other direction. Watch the goalkeeper, this ball right here, away. That touch right there cannot be a walk in the park, 10 yard ball in front of you into your six who can't see over his shoulder. The shout's not gonna be quick enough. The ball's not fast enough. You gotta put some distance and power on this thing. Ping it 40 yards down the field, allow everybody else to push their line higher defensively and then start to play. Instead, you give the opponent the second goal of the night. Marsman can't believe it. And we'll show you what transpired here in the second 45 minutes. And Ahmed Hamdi trying to get that pass and beyond in towards Kai Kamara will claim there by Nick Marsman. And Miami have quite a few set pieces to try and profit from. This time the strike will come in from Jake LaCava and Saylor leaving it for Uyoa to finish. A little questionable as to whether or not Brian Saylor is in an offside position here as the deflection that's going to come back through pops off his leg, drops right into the path. Is it even or not on the backside? It doesn't matter because you can't give that opportunity. I still go back to the players and the lack of marking overall for CF Montreal on the goal that they spill up here. Good job by Inter Miami pushing numbers higher in Uyoa. As this drops on the doorstep, it's pretty easy pickings to stick this into the back of the net and pull one back to the visitors. And Uyoa getting the preseason goal there. Montreal creating a chance up the other end. Jojea Quizira is ever cut up by Ryan Saylor. He and Modesto Mendez had to put out a few fires here in this second half. Quizera had a couple of opportunities of his own, though, and it was just a timing thing for Jorge Quizera taking the second or third touch when he didn't need to, hitting it first time when he could have actually stepped on it and brought it back across to some of his teammates. The possession numbers certainly fluctuated.